Hello guys, welcome to another video lesson on signatures text. Today we shall have a look at a beautiful poem, a thought-provoking poem, a revolutionary poem by Nelly Bong, the Chinese American poet. The title of the poem is When I Was Growing Up. So we are going to learn When I Was Growing Up by Nelly Bong. Nelly Paul was born in Auckland, California on September 12, 1934. She is a renowned revolutionary, a feminist poet and activist who struggled and took a lot of efforts to address socialist causes. Of course, these are the revolutionary elements in Nelly Paul. And she stood always for the downtrodden and she was there always for the socialist causes. Now, her parents, they were Chinese immigrants. So she was an American-born Chinese person. At a very early age, she started working in a restaurant begun by her parents. And she got her graduation from Auckland High School. And then she worked as a secretary for a steel corporation for several years and Nelly Wong was uh, expertised or adept in creative writing at San Francisco State University. Now, during the Second World War, when Japan bombed America's naval base Pearl Harbor, Nelly was a child. So we are looking at the, Ch the American-born Chinese poet Nelly Wong, who dealt with or who speaks about who or who deals handled the socialist causes or issues like racism, sexism and labor issues in all her works of art. And regarding her childhood, of course, uh, she was born in Auckland, California to Chinese immigrant parents. And here you can see Auckland. Yes. It's uh, an American uh, city, a very busy hub. And uh, pertaining to Nelly Wong's childhood, it was said that as a child she witnessed and she lived. She was a child when the Pearl Harbor attack took place um, in um, the American naval base at Pearl Harbor. And then Nelly was a child and this fearful this painful incident and event, this gruesome and ghastly happening in this global event, this actually impacted on her life because people would classify her family as Japanese when they were actually Chinese Americans. So physically, uh, her appearance and her physiological stature gives the, her, the circle, the environment, the social atmosphere around her that she was a Japanese, but then in reality, she was a Chinese American. She was an American born Chinese uh, individual. And this uh, really had lots of trouble in her identity and her racial uh, signature. So, uh, such themes and such incidents and such confusions and such, um, what do you say, uh, such. Uh, issues and conflicts, uh, her mental and emotional conflicts and her inner agony, all these uh, were expressed in her poems and her works. Now, there are so many uh, works of art, uh, collections of poetry uh, related to Nelly Wong. Now, among them, we shall have a look at uh, Unbound Feed. Unbound Feed is actually... Uh, remarkable aspect of uh, Wong's poetic career that she was one of the founding members you can see her along with her uh, co-partners you can see her she was one among the members of the beginning of the um, what do you say the beginning is the pioneers of this collective a writing collective the a group of writers a group of uh, Chinese American uh, poets they united and this writing collective was called the Unbound Feet. So uh, the recurring themes 
quite often recurring in the sense it was repeated again uh, such recurring themes in her poetry were the issues of feminism immigration and identity so just keep uh, these three important vital themes in your mind when we go through the poem when i was growing up and Nelly Wong was greatly obsessed with the roots of Asian American culture and she wrote at length about the Asian immigration to America what happens to people to Asian people or people of Asian origin when they immigrate to America to the US and they stay there they go for work to learn to study and they settle down there they reside there they mingle and then they establish themselves there and what happens to uh their next generations the upcoming generation so she was always obsessed and why because she herself suffered or confronted with this identity crisis and uh, racial discrimination you know people took her for the japanese especially with this uh, uh pearl harbor attack very fresh uh, during her childhood she really was impacted and she was influenced for of uh, that they they uh, because during the second world war it was japan who bombed this uh, who planted or who was the reason they were the red hands behind this uh, global gruesome act so in that case uh, uh, she was mistook for uh, being a japan in residing or living it was really difficult and hard for her to spend time and live in the us in those days so that's a reason maybe she, her poems and her works of art really reveals such pangs of agony and confusions now it is uh, something every asian family has experienced in the us that this trouble and this conflict was really experienced by every men and women of the asian origin residing inhabiting living and working in the us so she has written an article titled Asian American Women in Politics and this was recently included in an Asian American anthology and then we have spoken on unbound feet this was actually a performance group you know of chinese american women they wrote they read together they lectured at universities throughout california in the late 1970s now they have written so many songs and so many poems one uh among them to be mentioned is songs of farewell which was installed in public sites you know and um, there is a very much popular remark about wong's poetry uh, that is wong's poetry fuses or unites or combines a severe historical landscape with a deep passion for life that emerges from generations of uh, cultural wisdom and generations of suffering i think uh, this is a wonderful remark or this is a wonderful comment which you can quote if you're attempting any answer on nelly wong there are her poetry her works of art her verse they reveal or they reflect they are an embodiment of a meticulous uh, combination between a uh, historical landscape with a passion for life and this has emerged this was emanated from generations of cultural wisdom of course she is embedded and she is imbued and filled with lots of cultural wisdom both of her native country and her parent the foster mother the foster mother country where she is living because of course her blood is belongs to the japanese and the chinese whereas she was born in the america so uh, you cannot the the american part in her uh, birth and her life is inevitable you can't divorce that from her though she is of chinese origin so and then there are generations of suffering that is you belong to a particular country and then you're living as an immigrant you're born in part of there so the the country uh, negates you the country disclaims you the country where you are living disclaims you of course you have that kind of an attachment and association with the country in which you are born and brought up so these two strains together meticulously bind 
they sometimes attracts and they sometimes reveals opposes creating a lot of identity crisis and conflicts in nelly wong now you can see such uh, works and such collectives and such organizations and such groups of uh, writers again just like on bound feet you can see here another documentary history of uh, chinese women in san francisco so uh nelly actually delivered a series of very powerful and powerful uh, popular lectures titled women and revolution alive and inseparable at the radical women's conference so she was also a very significant and predominant member of the radical women's conference according to her now this is her definition of uh, feminism or this is uh, this is wrong feminism that women should continue fighting for the liberation of women since it is as necessary as breathing she was very concerned about the plight of immigrant women and she believed that the personal is political and women are not condemned they are not just uh, taken for granted they are not just destined to live as victims on planet earth this earth this world belongs to all so there must be some sort of a socialism or an equality between all genders especially in those days but we in the binary that is men and women so women are not creatures who are destined to be victims and victimized and lead a life of a uh, victim on this earth they should have a they should claim and they should come forward they should be treated as human beings their voices should be heard they have their own issues their conflicts and their grievances must be addressed at the radical women's 41st anniversary nelly wong declared that women's liberation is necessary because now here this is the credo of her feminism that is when women rise everyone will rise you can speak on volumes and volumes about this on this maxim on this dictum and this philosophy of nelly wong that is when women rise everyone will rise now e the she regards women as the most oppressed in the world no matter the world technology everything is advancing and soaring up to heights as uh, nelly wong she points out she ma points a finger at the stark reality that women are always oppressed in this world so socialist feminism was a key to a better world so nelly wong hails for she calls for a revolutionary feminism she calls on for a radical uh, feminism radical kind of socialist kind of feminism where women uh, women the issues and conflicts and the persecution and the sufferings and oppression against women all these things should come to an end because the world will be a better place only when the uh, condition of the situation the plight of women is better and it is heard and it is resolved because the uh, better life a uh, better situation a better uh, environment in this living uh, in this life in this world is possible only through a betterment of uh, women's situations or women lives because if she is uh, comfortable if she is happy if you can make a woman happy the next generations the upcoming generations the whole world will be a happy place to live most of her poems are merged from this working life because she says that a lot of my poems come from the workplace that is a place where i have experienced a great deal of sexism and racism just keep in mind i need you to focus on this poem why nelly wong speaks about workplace in most of her poems this is because a workplace is a place it's a a uh, spot or it's a location where women face a lot of oppression a lot of marginalization and a lot of sexual issues you know and simply because your income your job or your work or employment is too crucial for every person for every woman as as that of a man 
just like a a, a man uh, is more concerned just like a job or a work is more important to a man likewise a woman is also more concerned to bother about her employment and her income and her source of income so in that case you don't take you are always at a stake you are always at a risk factor so risk factors in workplace is too uh, too much or too ex excessive in the case of women and Nelly's poems like where is my country raise issues regarding her Chinese American identity so this is a recurring theme in Nelly's poems especially uh, where is my country is another important poem where she talks about her Chinese American identity how strangers often mistake her for someone else she is of course a Chinese American but then she's taken as a Japanese at her workplace sometimes people feel that they believe that they, they feel that she's a Korean and once a policeman spoke to her in Spanish while she was in Mexico and in a grocery shop a Chinese person another Chinese person inquired or also spoke up to her as if she was a Filipino so all these people are insensitive to her identity because you feel really uh, fragmented and scattered you are torn apart when your identity is being questioned or when your identity is always kept under doubt so Nelly Wong's poems have been uh, uh, published in England, Italy, France to name a few and she served as a delegate for the first US women writers tour to China so there are so many um, countries where Nelly Wong's poems have become uh, popularized and of course she was a keynote speaker at various national and regional conferences like the third world and feminist perspectives women against racism national women's studies association etc etc now um, now this socialist feminism this is what she considers a key to a better world and i repeat again as her famous philosophy of life or dictum goes on women if women rise everyone will rise if the dignity or the status of a woman is elevated or is taken to a height of comfort equality respect and reverence then the whole world is relieved it's the success or it's a triumph of the whole world now a poem when I was growing up is a frequently anthologized poem. So here again, I am sharing uh, another slide where you can see the recurring themes, the sexism and racism faced or encountered by Asian American ladies. This, these are the, um, the, uh, the often uh, dealt or handled themes and concepts and issues in Nelly Wong's poems. Okay, when I was growing up as a poem, it's an autobiographical poem which examines the contemporary mainstream views of beauty and sexuality. Now here she highlights the identity crisis experienced by the Asian Americans. The poem actually depicts or it gives wind to the past of the poet as a child, her early childhood and her adolescence. The narrator, the poem persona or the speaker of the poem is an Asian American. The poem talks to you about her childhood days when she was a young girl. It talks about her childhood and her adolescence. Now, the poem persona is an Asian American child, young girl. She is forced to conceive the dominant white culture. The dominant white culture, the white race, or the white culture, and the white people are uh, the best. So this notion or this concept of this dominance is, uh, what do you say, forced upon this young girl. And she is forced or compelled or coerced to accept this and disown that of her own owing to her fear of being discriminated. In simple words, you can say that Nellie Wong, a young girl who was living in America, in California, Auckland, in her 
childhood days in her adolescent period she herself really felt bad she was displeased uh, regarding her yellow skin or her brown skin whatever she disclaimed it she disowns it she doesn't want to be a chinese anymore she always yearned and pined to be a white she was really obsessed of becoming a white only then she feels that she belongs to this country or she is a perfect human being so the notion or the concept of being a perfect beautiful woman is that of uh, uh, is attributed or is taken as synonymous with being white if you are a white if you belong to the white race if your skin is white of course you are a perfect beauty so these two notions go hand in hand and this has caused a lot of uh, conflicts and crises in nelly wong's identity as a young girl the white culture attracts her and ensnares her with all its privileges so all the more she feels attracted towards this white race or this white skin at the same time she detests she hates it with all the privileges so there is some sort of a precariousness there is a, a tug of war between her chinese uh, identity as well as the american identity which was put into her because of her birth okay her birth place and her native place there is always a conflicting tug a pull and push a uh, pushing of uh, these two forces her native country and her uh, the foster country the the native identity and the birth identity the place where she was residing okay and the poem analyzes the struggle of a young lady to fit into the cultural majority so as a chinese girl in america she actually uh, belongs to the minority she is she belongs to the group or the faction which is lesser in number so she wants to identify herself with the cultural majority and she is full of self hatred towards her yellow skin and she wanted she is pining she is eagerly waiting for her skin yellow skin to turn white and she perceives that yellow skin is dirty she is possessing how oh, she has this yellow skin simply because she is dirty and she beauty is coded with white white is equal to beauty beautiful nelly comments about the poem that as a child i used to desperately wish for paler skin light skin lighter hair and rounder eyes because there's this peckney's eyes which always uh, creates a lot of self hatred in her she wants white skin she wants brown color hair and she wanted round and beautiful eyes like that of an american which is not at all possible i would have gladly undergone any kind of reinvention she's ready to undergo any refashioning or remodeling or any surgery even uh, that would make her uh, a white person and she is ready or she is happy to undergo any kind of reinvention available to be able to pass for white and stop hearing the ethnic slur what do you mean by a slur slur is a very indistinctive talking it's a passing casual comment which is not clear which is not legible legible you can't make out what is being said it's a very casual comment or remark on the playground so as a young girl while she was playing with other girls maybe some uh from the chinese and the others most of them the majority of them the american girls so as a baby girl she used to play with the them and of course she used to uh suffer or she used to silently um what do you say tolerate this ethnic comments from the Ch- american girls from the native girls maybe they would be uh or torturing maybe they would be taunting her or teasing her or passing certain uh racial comments which was really painful and intolerable to her so um these are the occasions which she really felt hurt and in the concluding stanza of the poem there is a transition and a self realization affected as she discovers her ethnic identity 
while the poem comes to an end she claims herself and she um really feels proud of her ethnic identity she realizes that she was really uh, this thing of uh, conflict and this issue of identity crisis in her ethnic and racial identity was really uh, in fact a foolish notion she should not have harbored encouraged and nourished such a foolish uh, idea in her mind and there was really uh, a self realization status at the end that she acquires and she reconciles she compromises herself she's happy with her chinese american identity and she is deconstructing she is dismantling and deconstructing the stereotypes of the western beauty cult so this is ex- exactly the theme uh, or the thematic concern of this poem when i was growing up she is exploring the themes of uh, exoticism and what you call orientalism sexuality and escapism you know uh the whole poem when you go through the poem you can see that it is written in an interactive style the poem persona seems to be uh speaking and conversing with the reader you won't feel completely detached it's not written on an objective plane it is written with so much of a plausibility and it's written with so much of a um subjective commitment that it's like a chatting conversational style between the writer and the reader where a lot of uh, a big philosophical uh, um what do you say cultural and post colonial uh, notions of the oriental orientalism and the exoticism and such things are dealt with we are not taking it to a bigger plane we can just um narrow it down to say that uh the poet breaks the notion or deconstructs or redefines the stereotypes of the western beauty cult the western beauty notion the eurocentric uh, notion that the best the west is the best and the western cult of beauty or the white race the white culture or the white women are the most beautiful uh, uh women among the uh among women or they are the most beautiful females in the in this world white race or beauty is synonymous with what is white white skin or the white beauty is always the genuine or original beauty so these standards are really broken and shattered in this poem the bo- the poem is written um uh, in past tense and the notable aspects of the structure of the poem they are the 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 poet has made a lot of indenting indenting in indenting stanzas and very little usage of capitalization capital letters are very less um every at the beginning of the sentences the beginning of the lines and then uh, wherever uh, necessary capital letters are not seen you can see that quite unusually everywhere you find small letters the other techniques employed in this poem they are repetition imagery and questions a lot of rhetorical questions are being posed towards the end of the uh, poem we can see a lot of rhetorical questions are being asked a lot of images are being portrayed and repetition the sentence when i was growing up when i was growing up this sentence is being this line is being repeated again and uh, the whole poem is very active very crucial as far as the feminist and socialist causes are being concerned and much of nelly wong's poetry they deal with these causes because uh, this is autobiographical this asian american experience and oppression is autobiographical to which she herself has uh, confronted both from the mainstream society and the chinese american community all these uh, <clears throat> issues that she has dealt with in this poem is quite common to the masses the asian american immigrants who are residing in uh the us so uh this is in fact the chinese american identity the issues and conflicts and such things related to the chinese american identity is what she cracks in this poem when i was growing up so uh we this in fact is an introductory lesson on nelly wong the american born chinese poet who dealt with uh feminism 
sexism and racism in most of her poems. And uh, here I'm sharing a few slides related to beauty concepts and notions. So what exactly is beauty? And you can ponder and reflect on your own notions and ideas and ideologies related to beauty, whether uh, you stand for your favoring the physical or the emotional or which do you prefer beautiful means? Is it the outward, the external uh, features or attributes that you see with your material eyes or is it the real character uh, which exactly adds beauty and charm to a lady of course she's talking about women in this poem that's the reason I focus on that and here is a quote uh, where you can reflect on your own thoughts and your own feelings and emotions related to the concept of uh, beauty So, towards the end of the poem, again, uh, the poet realizes that one's identity, one's character, that gives you power, that adds to your identity, that is that uh, that is really an asset to your dignity. And uh, you find the poet persona undergoing a series of transition, a change, and she evolves. Uh, through self-realization that her own Chinese-American identity is really worth it. And uh, here she breaks, she constructs, and then she deconstructs the stereotypes, the criteria of a Western beauty cult. We always benchmark our beauty concepts and notions and such things, anything, any life concept. We do that with the Europeans, with the West. Orientals or people like us from the East, we always uh, yearn for or pine for such things and we often compare or benchmark all these things. Uh, our, our life concepts, the West the West is always a touchstone, touchstone to all our life concepts, our food habits, our dressing habits, our attitudes, our perspectives, our thoughts, our education, our qualification, uh, what do you say, self-realization, everything, uh, the, uh, what do you say, uh, every, every life concept, every walks of our life, is being compared. We always pine and yearn for that. We always uh, benchmark and compare all these things with the West. It's quite natural. It's a psychological instinct of the Orientals. So all these issues are broken and uh, uh, re, re analyzed by Nelly Wong in her poems. So here we can see Nelly Wong reading out her poems at a reading corner of course you can see her how uh, people the environment the social the social community the mainstream community uh, the society uh, around her might have uh, taken her for as a filipino or a japanese uh, korean etc but never a uh, chinese so there's actually uh, marked a lot of this actually printed or registered a lot of uh, um, unhealed wounds in the identity, the personality, the individuality of Nelly Wong, which she identifies with a lot of uh, uh, Chinese American or Asian American immigrants who are uh, who have uh, no other choice other than work, live and reside in the US. So that's how or that's where Nelly Wong's poems become universal and they appeal to the global or the world masses or readers of poetry. See, here goes another beautiful quote, which you can uh, use in your answer, so you can keep it for your personal use where necessary the true beauty in a woman is reflected in her soul this is where the poem persona realizes uh, truth dawns upon her at the end of the poem so that is the introduction for when i was growing up by nelly Wong. 
the Chinese American poet. Thank you guys. Thank you for watching. We shall continue with the poem in the next video lesson. Stay safe.